calls like BDO Unibank. With leading scale and reach, the expertise and local knowledge to connect you to Philippine business. BDO Unibank. We find ways. Imagine a world where with one touch, you're transported to paradise. Where everything is integrated and you can now spend more time on what's important. Imagine townships that make everything closer. Closer to where you need to be and where you want to be. Imagine a world where with a touch of your fingertips, you're able to work and innovate with the best and the brightest. Or what if the company you have is the best at throwing parties? With smooth interconnectivity, it feels as if they're just around the corner. Anything intertwined closely, everything interconnected. Luckily, we no longer need to imagine because our townships are already here. Napansin mo ba, mas madalas ka nang magsabi ng stay safe kaysa babay? At aminin mo, nawili ka sa TikTok, hindi para mapasayang sarili, kundi para mapatawang iba. Napansin mo rin ba, na palagi na kayong kumpleto pag nagsisimba? At sino mag-aakala na ang daming maglalabas ang internet celebrities ngayon? <laughs> Ilang pagkain na bang na-order mo? Kahit di ka naman guto, uhaw ka lang makatulong. At nakailang care emojis ka nang nasend mula ng ECQ. Pansin mo, iba na bigla ang go-to playlist mo? Alam mo rin bang mas maraming naglalabas ng pera ngayon? Kahit naghirap? Alam mo kung bakit? Kasi patuloy mang magbago ang mundo, isang bagay ang mananatili. Malalampasan din natin to. Hindi tayo mawawala ng pag-asa. Kaya patuloy namin pinapanatili mo pinakamabilis at pinakamalawak ang inyong network so we can all be connected by hope. Napansin mo ba, mas madalas ka nang magsabi ng stay safe kaysa babay? At aminin mo, nawili ka sa TikTok hindi para mapasayang sarili, kundi para mapatawang iba. Napansin mo rin ba, na palagi na kayong kumpleto pag nagsisimba? At sino mag-aakala na ang daming maglalabas ang internet celebrities ngayon? <laughs> Ilang pagkain na bang na-order mo? Kahit di ka naman guto, uhaw ka lang makatulong. At nakailang care emojis ka nang nasend mula ng ECQ. Pansin mo, iba na bigla ang go-to playlist mo? Alam mo rin bang mas maraming naglalabas ng pera ngayon? Kahit naghirap? Alam mo kung bakit? 
Kasi patuloy mang magbago ang mundo, isang bagay ang mananatili. Malalampasan din natin to. Hindi tayo mawawala ng pag-asa. Kaya patuloy namin pinapanatili. Pinakamabilis at pinakamalawak ang inyong network. So we can all be connected by hope. of customers across retail. With diverse offerings, centers. Leisure and resorts. and financial services to reach our customers focused on the possibilities of convergence the synergies of businesses embracing innovation Responsible use of resources. To deliver continuous value and growth. Anchored on creating sustainable, responsible, and meaningful impact. the communities we serve. And committed to the happiness of our customers, to the development of our youth, In our aim for continued growth of our businesses and positive contribution to the nation.
As a retailer, dapat 12-presented ako sa lahat ng ginagawa ni Shen. Since given na yung quality, ang kailangan kong gawin is yung safety lahat ng pumapasok na customer as well as overall ng safety ng buong bawat stasyon. Kung minsan, hindi mo lang talaga maiwasan, may mga challenges. Siguro for the 15 years, nagpipick up ako sa limay. Pag nag-announce siya ng wala ng allocation, so ang gagawin ng tanker, kailangan lumipad sila sa Tabangaw or Poro. So which is 5 to 7 hours of travel one way. Minsan po kasi uh, medyo mahirap kasi nagkukang kami sa mga daan na uh, matrapik. During lockdown, itong pandemic na to, nag-announce kami na meron kaming subic terminal na bagong pwede. Masaya kami na convenience para sa amin mga retailer ng North Luzon and para sa mga customer namin as well. The moves that we are undertaking are really in line with our expansion plans. So we make sure that not only are we actually converting Tabangao into a world-class import facility on its own, but actually, we are setting up a network of import facilities all across the country. This uh, Subic import facility is certainly one of them. This actually allows us to have a more robust and more reliable supply chain. Because not only are we relying on uh, one source of finished product, we now have three uh, distributed supply sources in the country. Subic complements our existing asset base very well. It positions us to continue to deliver quality fuels to our customers, it improves our ability to do that in the areas where they need the most, consistent with our organizational growth plans and where we found that we weren't as strong from a supply chain perspective. So our partners can count on sustained reliability and the continued delivery of quality fuels. Shell has uh, access to 24 terminals all over the country. Tabangao uh, mainly caters for Metro Manila. North Mindanao Import Facility caters for Mindanao. Subic will cater now to Central Luzon, Northern Luzon, and even parts of Metro Manila. It enhances our cost competitiveness because uh, we now have an import uh, terminal in that area. My role as facility manager is to ensure safety and compliance across our operations, starting from vessel receiving to storing in tanks, and then loading in tank trucks, which delivers to our customers. Our daily goal is to ensure that we serve our customer with the best quality of fuels at the right quantity and at the right time. The promise to sustain and continue to give our best, whether as fuel or as a service, and make sure that we will keep an open mind sa lahat ng suggestions and comments to further improve our operations. So we would like to assure our customers and the general public our supply will continue to be reliable and available to all of our customers. Siguro yung pagiging part of something bigger than yourself. You're serving the fuel needs of the Philippines in general. So I think that's the best part. We are actually investing over a billion pesos to convert Tabangao into a import facility over the coming years. The fact that we have established our North Mindanao import facility a couple of years back and the fact that we are now inaugurating this facility is a true demonstration of Shell's commitment to the country.
Secretary uh, Carlos Dominguez, Governor Benjamin Jocno, former Secretary Jose Isidro Camacho, Mr. Eduardo Francisco, my colleagues at the Manila Times, including my co-host Ben Kritz. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the Manila Times 2021 Economic Forum. This event is meant to focus our collective attention on the future. But just for perspective, it seems interesting to mention that our Economic Forum last year was our last in-person event. Soon after that forum, the country was placed on lockdown to arrest the spreading coronavirus disease. The pandemic may not yet be over, and our events are still on virtual platforms, but our interests are now fixed on what lies ahead. Besides, the economic impact of that global health crisis is as well known as it is widespread. While it may be painful to recap the nitty-gritty of a negative 9% GDP contraction, it is noteworthy to mention that the confidence of our economic managers, as well as of government in general, remains intact. That view seems to be propped up by the country's solid economic found fundamentals. And in fact, many people still believe that the Philippines will pick up where it left off once life starts returning to the new normal. Today, we are at the beginning of that recovery period. The economy is opening up even more and the government is preparing to roll out its vaccines. Hopes of a robust recovery remains high even though there are still more than 100 countries in the world, including the Philippines, that have yet to start inoculations. As many of us heard in the past, the expectation is that the Philippine GDP will grow substantially this year, perhaps between 6.5% and 7.5%. We look forward to hearing an update on that, on that from our speakers today. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Dominguez. At this time last year, the Philippine economy was in the pink of health. We were expecting an economic growth of 6% or better. Our credit ratings broke all records. President Duterte's policy of fiscal prudence and his push for tax reforms enabled us to boost revenue collections to levels we had not seen in more than two decades. We also reduced our debt load to a historic low. We cut the poverty rate to a record low of 16.7% four years ahead of schedule. The unemployment and hunger rates were at their historic low levels. Our Build, Build, Build program had taken off, pouring billions into the domestic economy. That was last year before an unprecedented pandemic hit the entire world. The global economy slowed down as health and mitigation measures interrupted most commercial activities. Following the dictates of science, the Duterte administration put our people's health and safety first. Our mitigation measures, despite their costs, kept infections at bay. At no time was our health system in peril of being overwhelmed. The pandemic dealt a heavy blow to our people and to the economy. In 2020, the Philippine economy contracted by 9.5%. Our sustained effort at fiscal consoli consolidation was recognized through a series of credit rating affirmations amid the pandemic. We were able to quickly access emergency loans to fund our fiscal deficit. The financing we secured from our development partners and the commercial markets were at very low rates, tight spreads, and longer repayment periods. The credit rating affirmations helped us bring down our average interest rate per annum from 5.5% in 2019 to 4.7% in 2020 for domestic debt and from 4% to 3.1% for external debt. As we borrowed substantially the past few months, our debt to GDP ratio climbed from the historic low of 39.6% in 2019 to 54.5% in 2020. Even at this higher level, we were able to keep our debt to GDP ratio within a sustainable threshold. Some advanced economies had much higher debt ratios, even in the best of times. The Duterte administration places paramount importance on the preservation of our long-term financial viability. 
It is through this prioritization that the market allows us to continue borrowing at favorable terms for the Filipino people. Through the darkest times of the pandemic last year, we were never under the illusion that this challenge will be short. We are prepared to fight a long battle, exercising prudence over the use of our fiscal resources. The worst we could do is to run out of water before the fire is out. We could, for instance, be administering vaccines for years until the virus is extinct. This is precisely the reason why I always emphasize the need to maintain fiscal prudence even as we try to stimulate the economy. The sustainable fiscal position and a strong financial system are platforms on which we launch our economic recovery. This year, we expect our economy to post a strong rebound and grow at the range of 65 to 7.5%. But to be honest, we cannot recover all that we lost in 2020 in one blow. It will take us more years to nurse our economy to where it was before the pandemic struck. However, the prospects for 2021 are encouraging. We have gone through the worst episodes of this pandemic Medical science knows more about the virus. Vaccines are available. Public health protocols have been carefully studied and we are ready to reopen the economy. On the financing side, we are very optimistic that we can easily fulfill our funding requirement for this year on the back of our healthy domestic liquidity situation. We also have available policy tools to sustain a low interest environment. As our credit ratings remain better than our peers, we continue to have good access to official development assistance and external com commercial loans. Meanwhile, our record high international reserves and strong Philippine peso will strengthen our ability to import the goods that we need to support our economic recovery. This year, our country needs to collect as much revenue as possible to fund the comprehensive effort to defeat the pandemic and support public investments to help our economy recover. That great task falls on the shoulders of our revenue agencies. Nonetheless, we expect to achieve our adjusted revenue collection target for 2021 as the full digitalization of the Bureau of Internal Revenue and the Bureau of Customs is well underway. underway. This digital transformation is expected to dramatically inform the agencies, improve the agency's organizational capacity and collection efficiency. Meanwhile, a large part of the government's 2021 national budget was earmarked for our Build, Build, Build program, which has the highest multiplier effect on the economy. This will be the cornerstone of our economic recovery. Our enhanced revenue collection this year will help us sustainably fund the wider rollout for, of the infrastructure modernization program. The present economic downturn cannot be fully confronted by throwing subsidies at everything in sight. This would only fuel inflation without driving expansion. It will bring us to a debt crisis further down the road. Alongside our economic recovery measures, we are fast tracking the rollout of our national vaccination program. As we speak, negotiations for the purchase of vaccines and their delivery are well underway. The doses we are acquiring are more than enough to inoculate 100% of the country's adult population, which is approximately 70 million people out of our total population of 110 million people. Around 40 million of the population who are 18 years of age and below cannot be vaccinated yet, according to med medical experts. Aside from our healthcare workers, we, are pri we will prioritize vac vaccinating our economic frontline workforce. Doing so will help us reopen the economy safely. We will not recover alone. Should the global economy continue to be sluggish, that will pose headwinds on our own growth. Because of this, we have supported all efforts at building international solidarity 
both to defeat the virus and to revive the global economy. We are looking forward to all diplomatic initiatives to support a strong global economic recovery. For instance, the manufacturing industry is seen to get a strong boost from the Philippines' participation in RCEP, or the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. This agreement is the latest and largest formed trading bloc in the world. Our participation in RCEP will be beneficial to our micro, small, and medium enterprises by integrating them into the global value chain through market access provided in goods and services. Further, the RCEP will complement our ongoing trade and investment reforms for the resurgence of our manufacturing sector, enhancement of our investment regime, and strengthening of the agriculture sector. With an open, fair, and rules-based trading system, the RCEP will help restore business confidence and encourage more activity worldwide. The Duterte administration is committed to ensure that our economic fundamentals remain strong and our fiscal resources sufficient and sustainable. We are determined to rise to the twin challenges of recovering strongly from the pandemic and mitigating the impact of climate change. We will continue our dialogue with our stakeholders as we fine tune policies to encourage the best conditions for our people and our environment to prosper. The Duterte administration is doing its utmost to rebuild an inclusive, sustainable, greener and healthier economy for the Filipino people. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Jotno. Let me share some insights on the ASEAN and the Philippine economic outlook for 2021. Focusing on the BSP's policy actions to support the national government's whole of nation approach in addressing the current crisis. To start, the International Monetary Fund in its World Economic Outlook update released in January says the global economy is projected to grow by 5.5% .5 in 2021, a 0.3 percentage point upward revision from the previous forecast. This reflects additional policy support in advanced economies and expectations of a vaccine-supported economic recovery. Despite this, the pace of global growth is expected to be well below the pre-COVID rate. On the upside, accelerated vaccine distribution and its effectiveness and the higher fiscal stimulus are expected to further lift global activity. The downside risk, however, include potential virus surge, including infection caused by new COVID-19 variants and premature withdrawal of policy support before recovery is firmly rooted. On the regional front, the latest surveillance reports of multilateral agencies, such as the IMF, the World Bank, and the Asian Development Bank, see the ASEAN five economies rebound in 2021 following significant contractions in 2020. The IMF in particular projects the ASEAN five to grow by 5.2% this year. This is reflective of the broad-based recovery seen for the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. On the domestic front, these multilateral agencies expect the Philippine economy to expand by 5.9% to 6.6% this year. These are broadly in line with the national government's forecast of 6.5% to 7.5% for 2021. Meanwhile, some foreign analysts have rosier forecasts for the year with growth projections ranging from 6.1% to as high as 9.6%. Now, what are the key factors supporting this shared optimism? 
A quick look at some of the key economic indicators in 2020 show that even at the peak of the pandemic, the Philippines' macroeconomic fundamentals remain broadly intact. And these indicators include the following. The quarter-on-quarter -quarter improvements in GDP outturn towards year-end. Better business and consumer outlook. Within target inflation. Ample liquidity in the system. Sound and stable banking system and robust external payments position, and finally, manageable fiscal deficit. Rest assured that the BSP stands ready to extend the same set of policy measures implemented in 2020 to support the economy as needed. As this crisis is unprecedented, the measures we have implemented in 2020 were just as unprecedented. We are one with the government in our commitment to push forward measures to soften the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy and our fellow Filipinos. As of January 12, 2021, the BSP's policy and liquidity easing measures had injected close to 2 trillion pesos in liquidity into the financial system. This amount is equivalent to about 11% of the country's 2020 nominal GDP level. Moving forward, the BSP's actions and policy thrust will continue to be anchored on its core mandates of promoting price and financial stability. On monetary policy, the BSP will remain vigilant over the current inflation dynamics and operating environment with a forward-looking perspective to ensure that the monetary policy stance continues to support economic recovery and address any risk to our price stability mandate. On the financial sector, the BSP will intensify its monitoring and surveillance over its supervised institutions to ensure that they remain responsive to emerging risk and to promote the continued soundness, stability, resilience, and inclusivity of the banking system, particularly through the pursuit of enhanced digitalization. Third, on the external sector, the BSP will continue to adopt policies that will help strengthen the economy's resilience to external shocks. This will include maintaining market-determined market exchange rate, sustain a comfortable level of reserves, and keep the country's external debt manageable. In closing, I leave you with these key takeaways. First, the ASEAN five economies, including the Philippines, are expected to rebound this year, though downside risks continue to dominate. Improved global economic growth prospects and country-specific improvements amid vaccine developments and sustained fiscal policy support are expected to lend support to this economy's growth prospects for the year. Second, Consensus view expects Philippine economic recovery to be broadly in line with the national government's outlook for 2021. Sources of optimism on the economy's growth prospects stem from a quarter and quarter progress in the GDP outturn, improved business and consumer confidence within target inflation, ample liquidity in the system, sound and stable banking system, and sustained robust external payments position. And finally, the BSP remains committed to staying the course. First, maintaining price stability. Second, ensuring financial sector soundness. And third, strengthening resilience against external shocks. And fourth, supporting the national government's inclusive growth objectives. Thank you. Our next speaker, uh Lito Camacho, thank you for joining us today and uh, enlighten us on 
how things are going to go into next year, particularly from the perspective of the banking system. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ben, for your kind uh, introduction and good morning to everyone. Good morning, Plink, uh, and to the rest of the staff of uh, Manila Times. I just want to um, greet you from my office here in Singapore. Um, I'm very honored to be part of this uh, annual economic conference of Manila Times. I think this is my second time in the last five years to, uh, to speak at this forum. Uh, very honored to be following uh, Secretary Dominguez, of course, and uh, Governor uh, Ben Jokno. I hope I will not have to contradict you know, many of what they have said in my own presentation. I've been requested uh, this morning uh, by the uh, organizer of this forum to really provide a regional perspective or, or a regional context to what you may have heard from Secretary Dominguez and uh, Governor Jokno with regards to the experience of the Philippines through the uh, COVID-19 crisis and uh, expectations of for this year and the years to come. Uh, specifically, I was asked to uh, make some remarks with regards to two things. One is the uh, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, uh, which uh, Secretary Dominguez uh, briefly touched on. I think he had one slide on RCEP, uh, but also uh, the ASEAN perspective. You know, how has ASEAN performed you know, during this crisis and what are the prospects for ASEAN uh, in the coming years? So let me start with RCEP. Uh, and uh, let me, uh, for our uh, attendees, our viewers, our listeners, maybe just provide some, uh, some basic information about RCEP so we're, we've got the same set of information uh, that in, in understanding what's going on. Uh, RCEP was signed uh, recently, uh, November 15 last year, in the midst of uh, the pandemic, uh, during the virtual ASEAN uh, summit meeting hosted uh, by Vietnam. Uh, the RCEP consists of the uh, 10 ASEAN members, plus five of its major trading partners in the region, uh, in, uh, namely uh, China, uh, South Korea, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, RCEP I, I have to say it's, it's been 10 years in the works, right? This was initiated at the uh, Bali meeting of the ASEAN summit uh, in 2011. Uh, and it took all of 10 years, uh, which uh, by uh, comparison to many other international agreements of this nature is quite fast. So I must congratulate the, the members for being able to conclude uh, this major agreement we are consisting of 15 members and uh, representing about 30% of the world's population and 30% of the world's GDP. So it's a, it will become the largest trading bloc uh, in, in, in existence uh, when it becomes effective. RCEP, I think, is also very important because it really signifies the emergence of Asia as the economic center of gravity of the world, uh, as a sure as I am that the sun will rise tomorrow, I know that uh, Asia, particularly China and India, will become the largest economy in the world, and Asia will become the dominant uh, economic region in the world. So RCEP is really, really very important. But let me be clear. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. RCEP is not the magic bullet that will solve the problem of the economic recovery from the pandemic, right? Uh, in the first place, the effectivity of RCEP will only happen after a minimum number of ratifications that would have been done. I think six members of ASEAN, three members of the non-ASEAN members. But more important, the elimination of tariff among uh, RCEP members is envisioned to ha gradually happen over a 20 year period. So if you're hoping, for RCEP to have an impact in, next, in this year's recovery and next year's recovery, please, please take that away from your mind. Yeah? Uh, this is not the magic bullet. Um, uh, it, it's it's uh, also important, I think, especially in a world that we live in, you know, with uh, a lot of political turmoil. Um, RCEP is also... Um, uh, interesting because it deals only with economics and it makes no reference to other things like labor, human rights, environmental issues, and so on, which may very well become the more important challenges of the world that, that we face 
in the future. So let me leave RCEP on that note, right? RCEP is, I think it's a good thing that it has happened, but let's not get carried away. Uh, it will take time to take effect. RCEP is also at this point merely a consolidation or harmonization of existing bilateral and sub-regional agreements, right? So this only replicates what is already in existence. So the, the economic and investments and trade impact may be very, very minimal. I mean, think about the Philippines. You know, we already are part of ASEAN and we have our AFTA, we have our ASEAN Economic Community Agreements. Uh, we have our uh, partnership agreement with Japan. We have our recently signed agreement with China and so on. So RCEP to us may be duplicating what already exists for the Philippines. And that's true for most of its members. I, I want to take note, though, that uh, it's important to look at its parts rather than just looking at the sum, uh, because uh, looking at the parts would reveal a few things about the nature of the ASEAN member economies, right? Because you do have a very wide disparity of economic performance during the COVID-19 crisis and looking for looking beyond the COVID-19 crisis. What do I mean by this? Um, the economies responded or um, reacted to the COVID crisis um, worst or better, depending on a number of things. One is the nature of the economy, what drives their economies. Yeah? If you look at the Philippines, for example, we are basically an economy that's driven by domestic consumption. Our exports is pretty modest, tourism is pretty modest, so our external sector is quite modest. We're very dependent on domestic consumption. Um, the responses to the COVID situation was also very different. You have a, an economy like Vietnam, which did excellently. Believe it or not, uh, there's less than 2,000 number of infected, uh, infected cases in Vietnam uh, compared to, I guess, the Philippines is like some 550,000 or more and growing very quickly. Um, you, uh, you also have Thailand, which in the very beginning responded very well uh, to COVID. Um, you also have different economic measures that were laid out by the respective governments in response to COVID, uh, depending on its own fiscal uh, resources. You know, an example would be Singapore with its ample reserves, being able to take some $40 billion out of its reserves and deploying it to uh, respond to the economic challenges brought out by the pandemic. Joining us now is Mr. Eduardo Francisco, or as we like to call him here, Mr. BDO. Uh, I guess regarding Sunny Dominguez's uh, presentation, anyway, this is like a synopsis anyway for the viewers. Uh, he started out by saying Duterte's priority is health and safety first, uh, which I guess is good and bad, right? It's good, right, that he really locked us down, but then we also had the longest lockdown. It's also not so good now that he's still, we're still under lockdown and a lot are clamoring for reopening. So the, those are sort of the, the tug of war. But then uh, I, I applaud what the, the DO has done with create, guide, and fist bill. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, Secretary Sunny has always been very prudent. And I guess the thing there that uh, the, the quotation that I really liked what he said was, we don't want to run out of water before the fire is out. So that's fiscal prudence. No? But then he also said that he wants to revive enterprises and consumer confidence, which is really, I think, the problem uh, that we're facing with. Uh, and then segue into what Governor Ben said, our 65 to 70% economy with structural reforms. We all know that. Uh, and I guess the challenge there, really, the reaction is that, uh, I think it was in another uh, seminar also that we, we all attended, a lot of us listened to, was that how can you push the... I guess the horse to drink the water. So even if there are this, you know, there are these loans and uh, others, this, uh, this stimulus, if there's a lean of demand, which was also admitted by both Governor Ben and, uh, and Secretary Sunny, that uh, if there's no demand anyway, then it won't, it won't reopen. And this was echoed anyway in the third speaker, the great presentation of Lito. He explained the regional cooperation, of course, ASEAN. But then also, what also struck me, which I totally agree with, is, uh, is again, again the, the quote that I like, was, uh, and Lito, I don't know if I got it correctly, but when people don't go to school and go, go to malls, then there's really no economy. 
So um, I guess that's where I'm coming from. So my personal views are that uh, uh, um, the, the three earlier speakers, we're, there's, we're, we all belong to the same choir. We all want uh, the economy to reopen. And maybe this is where I, I ask the help of Ben and Kling because uh, I understand that our economic managers are support the opening of the economy. But personally, what I think the problem is, it's not the economic managers. I think the IATF and the LGUs are more reluctant. That's what we're hearing. They're the ones who don't want to open. And of course, it, it reaches the ears of the president. And if that's the case, when the president hears the uh, IATF, the LGUs, they don't want to open. So that's the problem. But from a private banking side, we're seeing demand and volumes pick up. Uh, but then here is the problem also, Ben. The big companies are going to rebound. Okay, That's not a problem. And then Secretary talked about the bill where the tax will go down. But the bigger problem really is what about the smaller companies? They're, we're not even talking about rebounding. We're talking about can they survive? Sure, the taxes will go down to 20%. But if you don't even have a business to run or if you're in losses anyway, tax, lower tax doesn't mean anything because you have no tax to pay. So, so it's more of that. I mean, I, I'm working in the capital markets. We will have blockbuster IPOs this year. A big, the biggest, potentially the biggest IPOs in the last the history of the country. But uh, that's for the big com companies. But the, the concern is the smaller, the smaller persons, which you alluded to the MSMEs when you asked that question. So, so that's really the problem. And then um, the other thing I guess I wanted to ask about or just talk about was uh, this is more, uh, again, my personal advocacy. Uh, because of this lockdown, and maybe I asked the help of the Manila Times, I fear that the kids are already suffering from being too, too, too cooked up at home. They're, they might be uh, experiencing signs of depression, we're hearing about potential suicides. And then uh, there's also a loss here in, uh, on uh, education. We've, I've talked to some people who are planning, those who can afford are planning to send them to abroad already because uh, uh, they're very frustrated to not being able to send their children to you know, meeting friends and going to school. So unless the economy opens and school reopens, I, I fear that there will be bigger problems. And at least I know that the Sinovac vaccines are arriving this weekend. I'm talking, a client also is the one bringing them in. I think they're arriving by military plane. So we've seen those pictures about vaccines arriving. I, I guess my request is that hopefully the government will allow hybrid classes to open up so that at least the, our children, which is really the, you know, the, the future of the country, right? You're always talking about an economic dividend so that the children at least will thrive. And as go, uh, going back to what Lito said, if they're not out anyway and they're not spending, then there's really no economy. So, um, so overall, I mean, thank you for uh, uh, inviting me here. Uh, very supportive of our government, our fiscal managers, our, our economic managers are doing the best they can anyway, balancing between you know, spending too much, borrowing too much, at least having the structural long-term uh, reforms. Uh, the challenge more is day-to-day how do we help the, the poor and uh, the struggling companies? So, so with that, I end my reaction. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Clay. Thank you once again on behalf of the Manila Times, and please join us again at our next event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Philippines moves to the beat of progress. And no one knows its pulse like BDO Unibank. With leading scale and reach, the expertise and local knowledge to connect you to Philippine business. BDO Unibank. We find ways. Imagine a world where with one touch, you're transported to paradise. Where everything is integrated and you can now spend more time on what's important. Imagine townships that make everything closer. Closer to where you need to be and where you want to be. Imagine a world where with the touch of your fingertips, you're able to work and innovate with the best and the brightest. Or what if the company you have is the best at throwing parties? With smooth interconnectivity, it feels as if they're just around the corner. Anything intertwined closely, everything interconnected. Luckily, we no longer need to imagine because our townships are already here. Pansin mo ba? Mas madalas ka nang magsabi ng stay safe kaysa babay. At aminin mo, nawili ka sa TikTok, hindi para mapasaya ang sarili, kundi para mapatawang iba. Napansin mo rin ba na palagi na kayong kumpleto pag nagsisimba? At sino mag-aakala na ang daming maglalabas ang internet celebrities ngayon? <laughs> Ilang pagkain na bang na-order mo? Kahit di ka naman guto, uhaw ka lang makatulong. At takailang care emojis ka nang nasend mula ng ECQ. Pansin mo, iba na bigla ang go-to playlist mo. Alam mo rin bang mas maraming naglalabas ng pera ngayon? Kahit naghirap? Alam mo kung bakit? Kasi patuloy mang magbago ang mundo, isang bagay ang mananatili. Malalampasan din natin to. Hindi tayo mawawalan ng pag-asa. Kaya patuloy namin pinapanatili. Pinakamabilis at pinakamalawak ang inyong network. So we can all be connected by hope. Napansin mo ba? Mas madalas ka nang magsabi ng stay safe kaysa babay. At aminin mo, nawili ka sa TikTok, hindi para mapasaya ang sarili, kundi para mapatawang iba. Napansin mo rin ba na palagi na kayong kumpleto pag nagsisimba? At sino mag-aakala na ang daming maglalabas ang internet celebrities ngayon? <laughs> Ilang pagkain na bang na-order mo? Kahit di ka naman guto, uhaw ka lang makatulong. 
at nakailang care emojis ka nang nasend mula ni ECQ. Pansin mo, iba na bigla ang go-to playlist mo. Alam mo rin bang mas maraming naglalabas ng pera ngayon kahit naghirap? Alam mo kung bakit? Kasi patuloy mang magbago ang mundo, isang bagay ang mananatili. Malalampasan din natin to. Hindi tayo mawawala ng pag-asa. Kaya patuloy namin pinapanatili mo pinakamabilis at pinakamalawak ang inyong network. So we can all be connected by hope. Driven By the mission to serve millions of customers across retail. With diverse offerings, Developments across many locations with new malls, residential projects, Properties, hotels and convention centers, Leisure and Resorts And in Banking and Financial Services To reach our customers possibilities of convergence, the synergies of businesses, embracing innovation, and responsible use of resources. Deliver continuous value and growth. Anchored on creating sustainable, responsible, and meaningful impact. In the communities we serve. to the happiness of our customers, to the development of our youth, in our aim for continued growth of our businesses and positive contribution to the nation.
as a retailer, dapat well-presented ako sa lahat ng ginagawa ni Shen. Since given na yung quality, ang kailangan kong gawin is yung safety lahat ng pumapasok na customer as well as overall ng safety ng buong bawat station. Kung minsan, hindi mo lang talaga maiwasan, may mga challenges. Siguro for the 15 years, nagpipick up ako sa limay. Pag nag-announce siya ng wala ng allocation, so ang gagawin ng tanker, kailangan lumipat sila sa Tabangangaw or Poro. So which is 5 to 7 hours of travel one way. Minsan po kasi uh, medyo mahirap kasi nagkukang kami sa mga daan na matrapik. During lockdown, itong pandemic na to, nag-announce kami na meron kaming Subic Terminal na bagong pwede. Masaya kami na convenience para sa amin mga retailer ng North Luzon and para sa mga customer namin as well. The moves that we are undertaking are really in line with our expansion plans. So we make sure that not only are we actually converting Tabangao into a world-class import facility on its own, but actually, we are setting up a network of import facilities all across the country. This uh, Subic import facility is certainly one of them. This actually allows us to have a more robust and more reliable supply chain. Because not only are we relying on uh, one source of finished product, we now have three uh, distributed supply sources in the country. Subic complements our existing asset base very well. It positions us to continue to deliver quality fuels to our customers, improves our ability to do that in the areas where they need the most, consistent with our organizational growth plans and where we found that we weren't as strong from a supply chain perspective. So our partners can count on sustained reliability and the continued delivery of quality fuels. Shell has uh, access to 24 terminals all over the country. Tabangao uh, mainly caters for Metro Manila. North Mindanao Import Facility caters for Mindanao. Subic will cater now to Central Luzon, Northern Luzon, and even parts of Metro Manila. It enhances our cost competitiveness because uh, we now have an import uh, terminal in that area. My role as facility manager is to ensure safety and compliance across our operations, starting from vessel receiving to storing in tanks, and then loading and tank trucks, which delivers to our customers. Our daily goal is to ensure that we serve our customer with the best quality of fuels at the right quantity and at the right time. The promise to sustain and continue to give our best, whether as fuel or as a service, and make sure that we will keep an open mind sa lahat ng suggestions and comments to further improve our operations. So we would like to reassure our customers and the general public, our supply will continue to be reliable and available to all of our customers. Siguro yung pagiging part of something bigger than yourself, you're serving the fuel needs of the Philippines in general. So I think that's the best part. We are actually investing over a billion pesos to convert Tabangao into a the import facility over the coming years. The fact that we have established our North Mindanao import facility a couple of years back and the fact that we are now inaugurating this facility is a true demonstration of Shell's commitment to the country.